today. She'll appear for the seventh time this season. A .82 goals against for her coming into this one. In front of her, Naya Cardoza, Brittany Rafino, Ava Seelenfreund, Zoe Maxwell, Gianna Deprice, Jessica Hinton, Evelyn Calhoun, Kayla Duran, Maya Grant Clavijo, and KK Hogg in for Cheyenne Allen, who is unavailable for today's game. And we are underway. Cornell, as you may surmise, wearing the road reds with white numerals, white trim, and they will attack left to right here in the first half against the home team Bears, who are wearing the home whites as Mia Gonzalez pushes the ball to the near side out of bounds and will have a throw in. And it will be interesting to see, Mike, it is a league game, and as you get further and further down into the season, it'll be interesting to see quite honestly, how physical a contest we have here today as no, Hinton I, plays it out of bounds. Yeah, I expect this one to be quite physical. You know, Cornell again, an opportunity here to kind of shake things up in the league picture. Harvard already won earlier today, defeating Princeton three to two. So they are, as of right now, in first place, a point ahead of the Bears. But uh, obviously if the Bears win, they will go back in first. But yeah, this is gonna be a, a gritty, hard fighting Cornell team out there trying to make a statement of their own and, and do something that many teams don't get to do here at the center for lacrosse and soccer, and that is take down the Brown Bears. Kayla Duran will put the ball down as we had a foul whistled. In the first minute or so, game time temperatures in the 60s. Little bit of a breeze here and there, but certainly not too much of a factor. Here comes Seelenfreund, punched up and over the top. She's trying to say it was tipped, because yeah. it sure looked it. Yeah, it was very close. I mean, usually she's not gonna miss by that wide a margin on her own. Here's another look, great job by our crew. And Maybe, maybe not. Certainly close, but official was in a pretty good spot to make that call. There's love to get Seelen Freund going again. Seven goals for her on the season behind uh, Brittany Rafino and very quietly Kira McGuire sitting in third at the Bears with five goals and three assists. And uh, Grant Clavio will get called for the foul as I think it was. Uh, yeah, some incidental contact there. Just kind of clipping yep. the, the feet while trying to catch up with that one. And little sportsman like pat on the back for the fallen big red player. Yeah, Cecily Pakigo went down, the sophomore, and it'll be played by Fox, the sophomore from San Marcos, California. Pretty young club for Cornell. A lot of sophomores, a lot of first years. Grant Clavijo knocks it to the near wing. Haug puts her afterburners on, gets to the ball first with uh, Gonzalez and forces it to Hinton, a nice touch just beyond the reach of Grant Clavio, covered back by Peyton Nichols. De Priest with a touch, she's bowled over, and uh, they're gonna get the foul on Regan Powells. Say she uh, had an arm up. And she is not too thrilled with that call, and sent the ball way down to Bella Shop. And we'll take another look here. Yep, yep. Kind of came in, it was very close to a 50-50 challenge, or maybe more of a 60-40 there, and that's why it drew the whistle from the official. I think it's just trying to set a tone for this one. Ball headed down by Gonzalez, Rafino back to Grant Clavijo. Again, Rafino trying to turn over Emily St. John and lift it out to Hinton, and there's gonna be another call behind the play, and we're seeing a lot of whistles in the early goings. Yeah, and there's a consistency, you know, he's calling the Somewhat more touch fouls that we've seen, you know, maybe go uncalled over the course of the season. But again, it's good to establish kind of what the baseline is for fouls so both teams can adjust to that. And as long as the referee stays consistent, you know, both teams can't complain. Fox sends it upfield, headed down by Hinton out to the far flank. Powell's will turn it back towards center. Hinton gets a touch to Priest for the Bears, sends it out. Grant Clavio looking to turn. She lost her footing trying to get around Abigail Bishar, uh, Bishara, and uh, it'll be turned back upfield off of Nichols and out of bounds for a throw in. And it seems both teams kind of just trying to find their rhythm here and get their offensive flow going. Cardoza snaps it in, was looking for perhaps Rafino. It'll be knocked out to, was sort of looking up that right side for Seelenfreund. And another Cornell throw. The shadows almost completely eclipsing the pitch here at Stevenson Pin since. Knocked by Duran out of bounds. And seeing why 
Cornell gave Yale some fits last week, a 0-0 draw in that one. As Duran turns, it'll be sent over. No, that never made it out. It bounced off the end line and took an English back towards the field of play. And there's gonna be another whistle on Grant Clavio, who's not too happy about that call as she charged into Sarah DeGraw. Yeah, and I think both teams used to playing a little bit more physical and letting play continue a little bit more than what we've seen early on today. This kicker's gonna be into a breeze that's uh, kind of blowing from the near to the far side. Here comes the restart. It's curled in towards the net and at the 18 or far side of the 18. Was Duran getting a piece of it? Now Hinton sending it away as uh, Cornell continues to lock in here. Far side will be DeGraw taking a throw. The fifth year out of Rye, New York, takes a throw in. Up goes Maxwell. And out towards Rafino at midfield. Back for Calhoun and out ahead, Haug making the run, lost her footing, but it was knocked out of bounds by Mia Gonzalez, the junior from Westport, Connecticut. And Bears are gonna make a quick change as uh, DePriest off and Lexi Quinn checks in. Well, and we were wondering about, you know, the fitness level for DePriest. We saw her kind of get pretty banged up against Harvard last week. Obviously, she didn't play against Stonehill, but I think by virtue of this early substitution, she might not be at a, 100% and Coach McNeil not wanting to risk any more right now. And Quinn, who's played well, you know, she came up with a goal, a nice free kick on Tuesday night and has certainly logged a lot of minutes back there throughout her career. Haug ahead, Seelan Freund left side, turns it back towards center, and uh, it's going to be, a, it should be a corner kick. It really should be yeah. a corner, yeah. It, it was absolutely tipped, I want to say, by St. John. But what a great sell job, though, by Fox trying to get this. It looked like there was a little deflection as it came off, and then... Sorry, it was it was Gonzalez. Yeah, and Fox just kind of was letting it go, but not sure she would have been able to keep it in play anyway. So the first corner kick of the night here for the Bears, Calhoun. And does have a pretty good in-swinging kick here with the right foot. Bears all spread out throughout the 18. Sent up over the head of the goaltender and tipped just wide as Rafino was on the doorstep. And I really don't know how that didn't go in. Seelan Freund and Rafino, two of the top scorers in the league, both had a crack at it and just couldn't push it over the line. What a great corner by Calhoun. Great bend on it, just gets through the netminder and I think maybe Seelan Freund thought that Fox was gonna get a piece of that one as it came across, but what a chance for the Bears. Headed by Rafino, sent through. Here comes Grant Clavio off her line is Fox, who has been very active in, in her movement, Mike. Very, uh, very quick off the line. Yeah, she's had to be very aware back there and has good command of her box, at least so far. Knows when to come out and grab that ball and when to stay put. But uh, it could wind up being a long day for Erica Fox if the Bears get going offensively. Grant Clavio tried to dish, had Rafino calling for it, maybe held it a step too long. Left side, here comes Nichols in transition, out ahead for Tatum Nelson, lost the handle, out to Rafino, a little flip, and they're getting her off, coming from an offside position, and that's a curious one because I, I think Rafino had it, reset. Yeah, it looked like she had reset already, so a tough break for the Bears there, but you know what, they just gotta be a little bit more aware. She was definitely offsides following the takeaway, so might have just been a, a little bit of a late recovery for the Brown striker. Pushed back towards center by DeGraw and out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Cornell. Nine minutes gone here, first half. No score, Bears and Big Red. One in the air by Cardoza for another Cornell throw for DeGraw. Grawl, one of a couple of fifth years on the roster for the Big Red. And the Bears have pretty much had Cornell's number for a long time. Cornell has not beaten the Bears since back in 2008. Ball lifted over the head of Rafino, who settles in the midfield, gets it to the right side. Maxwell tried to connect. They had Rafino on the run. I'm sorry, Seelenfreund on the run. And now she will reset. Trying to get onside, and that is kept alive. Nicely played 
on the far wing by Powell's and to the midfield comes St. John. Little tip to the far wing. Powell's for uh, we're trying to send O'Neill or Nelson rather on the uh, on the run. Really nice cut back there by Duran, able to find Cardoza as the Bears advance it up all the way to Rufino. Rufino turns, gets it through. Here comes Seelenfreund. Gonzalez back to Fox. And one in the air. Here's Grant Clavijo. Gets a step on DeGraw and on the double. Ball comes out. Powell's back for DeGraw again as the Bears trying to showcase some speed in the counter. Back comes Cornell, and I think, Mike, you know, if, if your coach McNeil, she talked about pressing the block a little bit when we talked with her today, uh, or talked to her yesterday, I should say, and one of the things that Cornell needs to guard against is getting involved in a track meet. Yeah, I don't know if they have the horses to keep up. You know, the Bears have plenty of bodies they could throw up front with a lot of speed that could really wreak havoc on defensive lines, and we'll see, you know, right now, Cornell, kind of a flat four. Uh, defensively as they try to yeah. hold that line but we know the Bears are going to be high pressing this and high and entire gamers least as long as they can and you know keep trying to make things happen down the flanks and get those crosses in Haug turns ball will be sent out of bounds Hinton there for the throw in for the Bears it was knocked away on the double by Gonzalez thrown in and uh, pushed back to center Cardoza from Duran pushes for Cardoza again from Quinn. Ball bounces, oh. hits a defender, and it kind of went off the back. Waiters, I think. Yeah. One of, the, one of their captains. I believe they have seven. Seven captains, yes, they do. It's a lot of leadership. <laughs> hey, it's certainly a, a dangerous moment there for the Bears as. You know, Fox able to recover well after it hit off a of waiter's back. Could have easily have fallen, though, to Rufino in a good spot. Maxwell, some fancy footwork on the right side. Continues to take her space. Drops it back for Cardoza. She'll lead it into the box, but right in on the goaltender. Yeah, and a good idea there by Cardoza. She's all the way, you know, almost equal with the bottom of the circle. And on the touchline, sending it in deep, but a little too deep, making it a little too easy for Erica Fox, who's been quite busy in the opening, basically 12 and a half minutes now. Ball headed, tracked by Gonzalez, not gonna get there, and it will be a Brown throw with about 12 and a half minutes gone here in the first half. Now, I want to thank whoever designed this building for putting us right above the concession stand. We get that, <laughs> the smell of popcorn and uh, if they and, ever make and other treats. And other tre <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the popcorn that really gets the, uh, the, the dinner time stomach going as the ball tipped. Grant Clavillo uh, trying on the reset. Sealant Freund, Duran, hard to the ball. Grant Clavillo looking to turn, looking wide. will set it for Calhoun. Calhoun has Haug. Well read uh, by Sidney Malaga, and it'll be a Brown throw in again. Well, after the first maybe five minutes where it was a little even out there, neither team really taking charge. The Bears have certainly left their imprint on this game, and you feel the goal is coming soon as they continue to be in attack mode. Cornell kind of just holding on for dear life right now. Waiters gets a head on it. It'll come out to Hinton. Uses a left, Seelenfreund, a good shield, gets through a couple of defenders and was being grabbed by Gonzalez. And uh, they'll put the ball down for a restart. Yeah, good physical play there by Seelenfreund, able to bounce off of one defender and fend off another one even while getting grabbed. And this sets up a great opportunity for the Bears in a very dangerous spot. Looks like Hinton will uh, take it. This would typically be uh, Cheyenne Allen territory, especially on this near side, the left side. But uh, they'll use Hinton, also a good weapon, as uh, everybody lined up in or around the 18, excepting Cardoza. It's a good ball served up. Seelen frying, I'm sorry, uh, Rafino goes up. How the drive is stuck. And a Quinn, a terrific slide. And Duran will reset Hinton. Has Haug left, uses her on the flank. Haug looking to take the end line, curls it back towards center. Here come the Bears and a takedown. 
No call as it's pushed in by Calhoun and saved by Fox. But Mike, uh, hard to believe uh, yeah. that there wasn't anything there. We'll get another look. Yeah, let's see this ball in in real time. It was very close to looking like a penalty. A great ball played in by Hogg. Fox yeah, well, was the other defender coming back. I believe it was the 32, Pokio, Pokey Go. And uh, whew, it was certainly close, but... Yeah. Uh, she might have been tangled by her own yeah, player. I mean, the, the referee was, was right there. So, you know, he has the best vantage point. Play on was the decision, and play on they shall. But the Bears, again, continue to just knock on the doorstep. And now they're going to stop the clock. Maybe we have a blood situation or contacts or something as Calhoun uh, comes over to see the trainer. I think she's got a scratch. Yeah, it looks like a bloody nose. Yep. So they uh, will send the fourth official over to check things out. And the Bears could sub and it wouldn't count against Calhoun. Yeah, no, they're going to they're going to get yeah, Anderson. Anderson will come in. She's been uh, pretty Steady. much the first one off the bench so far this season and for good reason. She's given him a lot of quality minutes as the junior from San Francisco. Two goals and two assists coming in off the bench already this season. She will check into that There's interior the midfield position. Anderson Ball lifted. Good read by Anderson. Waiters. Mishandled, Maxwell, nice slide there by Powell to regather the ball. Quinn gives a little shove to Nelson. Nelson, some good footwork, squares it off, gets it out of trouble, and St. John will keep it moving to Gonzalez. Good ball movement there by the Big Red. Little stiff arm there from Gonzalez, lifts it down the line. Duran plays it out of bounds, the safe play with Peyton Nichols bearing down on her, and a good reset there for Cornell as they were able to reverse the point of attack. And we'll see what kind of throw Mia Gonzalez has as she works it up the near side. Ball crossed. Quinn sends it away. Gonzalez there for Cornell. Turns it to the flank and offsides is Malaga as the Bears held the line and I think caught Malaga maybe watching yeah. a little bit. Well, and all the credit's got to go to Kayla Duran. I could watch her from up here. She's just barking out orders to that back line to get them pushed up and was able to draw Cornell offside on the play. And the Wiley veteran from Woburn, Massachusetts. 16 and a half gone here. First half, no score. Bears in big red. As uh, the Bears have yet to yield a shot. They've had a couple of their own. Maxwell, the touchback earlier today in Ivy action. Harvard Crimson needed to come from behind down in New Jersey, but came away with a 3-2 victory over Princeton. Yeah. You know, what was a battle as well? Not once, but twice in that game. They were down 1-0 and then 2-1. to one. But Hannah Griffin and Ainsley Amadian coming up with the goals for the Crimson. A little bump there by Gonzalez. Will draw the corner kick as she had some physical play there with Rafino And Rafino gives the thumbs up to Anderson, who will trot over to take this corner kick. Bears sending up. Cardoza, Quinn, and Duran. They'll drop back Maxwell and now uh, Hinton. And actually, yep, they're going to send Calhoun back on. Yeah, good move there by Coach McNeil. And uh, the one thing I'm loving right now, I'm watching the bench area where Cheyenne Allen is literally going up and down the line, giving everybody a high five, and then everyone a pat on the back as they await this corner kick. So I think today uh, may be more precautionary than anything else, but she seems in great spirits down there today on the bench. There's that corner from Calhoun. Seelenfreund headed it down. Rafino couldn't get a foot on it. Neither could Haug. Maxwell will drive it back towards center and it's saved by the goaltender Fox. And again, Cornell's been doing a good job on these corner kicks of just getting everybody back and really clogging things up, not giving the Bears really good lanes to shoot in once that ball drops in. Another look here at the last corner from Calhoun and getting into a dangerous area, but Seelen Freund unable to get it through that sea of red jerseys. Yeah, Calhoun had the uh, initially came off with a bloody nose. She has a bandage on her arm. I thought I saw a scratch and she seems well, to be OK. She was holding it against her nose, too. So when they gave her a towel and she was kind of holding it up to her face when she came off. So I think multiple <laughs> blood issues there for Calhoun, who is about as tough as they get out there. Turned all the way back for Bella Shop, the brown goaltender wearing the Multicolored goldenrod uh, uh, uniform kit. Out of hit. Little turn by Haug. Will draw Waiters out. Hits a deflection. Seelenfreund through two red jerseys. Up goes Calhoun. One by Nichols. Another nice step to the ball by Hinton. And Cornell has to slow it down. 
and just get it out of bounds for a throw. And again, there's that high press that the Bears love to employ and have really made things difficult for Cornell. I mean, the big red players are hardly having any time on the ball or any time to do anything without a white jersey right on top of them immediately. Goal kick coming out will allow the big red to substitute as uh, Ashley Durick will check in. The uh, senior from Louisville, Kentucky will uh, replace Peyton Nichols in that Cornell front line. We're awaiting this goal kick from Fox. Here it comes. Sails to Rafino. looks like she had a read on it. And uh, it was one in the air. Well, Emily St. John is the player that went down on a knee for a second. There was a little bit of contact with Rafino. Yep. And she popped right back up, so it looks like she'll be okay and able to stay in. Now well, she was heading it when that contact came, so I think a little whiplash seems to be all right. As we are 20 minutes gone. Cornell pressing everybody up is uh, Gonzalez for the restart. She sends it up, up, and away. Turned on the far side. Bears had lost track for a moment, but uh, Duran there to bail it out. Yeah. Just so smooth back there on the Bears center back, Kayla Duran, reigning Ivy Defensive Player of the Year, and has just continued to shine back there as one of the best in the league. Cal, I'm sorry, Grant Clavio fights through. Seelan Freud for Rafino. Rafino has a two, now three players to beat. She's going to take it herself. Looks back, turns, feeds it ahead. Grant Clavio called off sides and. That's a tough one for Kia McNeil, and uh, we'll get a look. Did she get a step in behind the defender? Yeah, it was certainly close. Let's see if we get it from this angle. This is a little bit tight shot. Great job by Rafino just holding up play again. Basically, she was one on four to begin with. Oh, mm. that's a tough one. Uh, that's tough angle, too, to tell, but that's what certainly I was close, yeah. I know uh, Grant Clavijo seemed pretty surprised with the call, the reaction on her face. Quinn with a touch. Seelan Freud couldn't handle. Maxwell presses it back. DeGraw to center. The one-two with Bashara. And it's intercepted by Brown. Maxwell working up the flank. Draws out the midfielder. Plays it towards center. Waiters knocks it down. And Cornell resetting far side. Yeah, well played by Sydney Waiters that time. Getting just in front of Rafino, Able to knock it out of the way. Calhoun. Intercepted in the midfield by Malaga and uh, taken back by Quinn. A lot of 33s out there. Quinn drops it off for Maxwell. She's harassed by Bashara. Cuts through and was fouled. And that call made there. The AR had the flag up right away to indicate the foul as Maxwell a little bit slow in getting up. Yes. Here's another look. The Some heavy contact from behind, right? Yep. Well, it was the, the, sweep, the sweep of the of leg, leg at the ex, uh, the last second by Abigail Bashara, the freshman taking down the senior. But again, another one of those good areas for the Bears and for Jessica Hinton to play a threatening ball into the box. Strikes it towards the penalty stripe. Up went Duran. Rafino cuts back, turns, corner kick. Yeah, just nice job by Rafino. Got some good touches there and. She doesn't get the cutback, she gets the corner. There's nothing left for Mia Gonzalez to do but tap it out. Number 22, and Evan the Bears have been at their most dangerous this the afternoon on these corner kicks with Calhoun taking them. As we just go past the midway point of this first half. Again, a different look for the Bears on this type of setup on this corner kick. Yeah, five, six players in or around the box. It's a good look. Rafino gone up, headed away, Quinn will let it run for a brown throw no subs to wait and they'll use cardoza to take the throw quickly for rafino gets to the end line curls it towards center Haug. now sealant freud the score how got a little touch sealant freud at the penalty stripe top shelf and the bears lead one nil yeah not much that erica fox could do on that one and ava sealant freud bags her eighth goal of the season smiles there for the senior from Truckee, california fell nicely for her and just pops it in 
right over the netminder, and the Bears lead this one 1-0 one on Seelenfreund's eighth of the season. Snaps what was a pretty lengthy scoreless streak for this Cornell back line, which again held Yale scoreless a week ago. And 24 minutes in, the Bears lead 1-0 on their Bears third shot of the Morgan, shot on goal of 11. the afternoon. Bring Seelenfreund into a tie with Rafino atop the Her Bears goal the tending, uh, goal scoring leaders. Minute. Yeah, Rafino coming into the game as the second leading scorer in the league in terms of goals per game. And right behind her was Seelenfreund and both of them up there in points per game as well. It's really been that two-headed monster up top for the Bears that has been so devastating and difficult for opponents to deal with. And when those two are in good form as they have been pretty much all season, really makes the Bears a tough uh, out. And Co Coach Ferguson's not happy about something. I'm not sure what, but he's not happy about something. Cornell pressing, Maxwell tracking back against Hannah, I'm sorry, against uh, DeGraw on that far flank. It comes out to Seelenfreund. She cuts back, and somebody on her back now gets it back to Cardoza. She lifts one, and out to the wing it comes. Maxwell has, gee, I don't know if they realized how open, uh, now they do, they get it across to Haug from Calhoun. Haug looking to turn, trying to get a step on Malaga. Does a good job. Really well played there by Malaga on the transition defense. Yeah, good recovery by Malaga to get kind of in front of Haug and then be able to shield that one out of play as uh, this is kind of an important period right now for Cornell. They, they cannot afford to let the Bears go on one of their little runs like they like to do and get two to three goals in quick succession. Squared back Hinton for Duran, who surveys the scene and now sends it up. Was, I think, trying to connect with Seelenfreund. Seelenfreund, fortunate not to get called for coming from an offside position. And what a ball, but just a little too hot from Grant Clavillo. Yeah, again, great idea there. They saw Maxwell making that run towards the corner flag, but a little bit too much leg behind the pass. And it'll be a goal kick for Erica Fox in the big red. You get the sense, Mike, I mean, I've been watching Cornell's back line. They seem to be communicating well, but they seem a little helter-skelter in terms of their movement because I think the Bears press is coming at them with a little bit more aggression than perhaps they've seen in, in uh, really uh, any team except Harvard, and Harvard I, yeah. put five goals on them. Yeah, I was just going to say the only other team that really presses similar style to the Bears is Harvard. And, uh, you know, the, the biggest difference I see right now between this game and last week's game against the Crimson is just the overall team speed, where last week I felt Harvard had a little bit of an advantage there across the pitch. Uh, you know, obviously certain players are faster for the Bears, but just overall as a team, quicker players for Harvard. Today it seems like the Bears with the quicker players out there, and that's helping them move that ball around, especially in the transition parts of the game. Bears were lobbying for a call as the interception by Seelenfreund ends up. Watch out. <laughs> Watch out, uh, watch out one of the uh, family man Cuso. Yeah, there. Ella down there, <laughs> taking this one for close range, but uh, fortunately, uh, <laughs> she has quick hands. Able to get out of the way. <laughs> she seems to be okay. <laughs> Substitution for the Bears, Haug checks out, and Carly Schlosser will check in. And Mike, this is a decision that we were hoping to see. Uh, with no disrespect to any of the Bears who had been coming off the bench, like Larissa Hamblin, like uh, Anderson, like McGuire, Schlosser played tremendous soccer against Stonehill the other night, and a foul called. Uh, are they gonna oh, wow. This, this is – I thought they were going to the pocket there was the official. But it, it sure looked it, didn't it? In the end, just the, uh, the stern talking to you. That would have been pretty harsh for a card, but – Cooler heads prevail, and it's just the talking to. Is, it was no doubt a foul, but certainly didn't seem to warrant a card there. I think Coach Ferguson uh, <laughs> would easily disagree as he was having a conversation with the fourth official on the near touchline. Maxwell had moved to the near side to accommodate the entry to the game of Schlosser. Yeah, and she really was fantastic in that game. Uh, just one of the players that really stood out. And again, the Bears went with a, a different type of lineup and a different type of situation. And, you know, some players really shined. We saw Claire Myers come up with a huge hat trick. She was tremendous. Schlosser was awesome. So 
you know, it's good to see some of those players that you might not usually get to see as much certainly making the most of their minutes and leaving an impression on the coaching staff. And we talked to Coach McNeil about it, and she agreed with us. Saying, yeah, you know, she lost her play great, and, you know, hopefully she can find a way to get her some more minutes in some of these games down the stretch. Stepped in and slowed down. DeGraw snaps a throw in down that far wing. It's tracked by Aiden Julia Reinemann, the uh, crimson making, I'm sorry, the big red making a change in that uh, Last sequence as well. Reinemann, the native of Los Angeles, the other fifth year on the roster for Cornell, as that's turned away by Cardoza, who sends that one over the fence. Yeah, that one uh, towards the practice field. And oh, there was, was yeah, yeah was Cornell, the table. Yeah, Lily Ellingson was uh, getting ready to check in, and she will replace Sydney Malaga. And uh, I'll tell you, Malaga, Malaga had uh, well, walked she's, a lot of miles. Yeah, she's had her hands full, you know, mainly with KK Hogg when she was in, and you know, having to shut her down and trying to prevent those crosses from coming in. So good minutes and a well-deserved rest for her before they. Halftime intermission. And we head to the final third of this first half. Ball's going to loft in, and Bella Shop will handle it. I don't think it goes in the books as a shot. Nah. Uh, but Shop had to handle it as she came off for line. It's the last player back more than a uh, any kind of attempt. Yeah, and for any Brown fans, uh, a great podcast this week. Scott Cordishi able to sit down with both Bella Shop of the women's team and Henrik Viper the goalkeeper for the men's team. You can go to brownbears.com and check out that podcast or get it on really any podcast platform. Great stuff, though, listening to the, the two freshman netminders kind of talk about different experiences they've had here and before Brown. Nice turn on the wing, but Cardoza wasn't fooled. The Brown men in action right now down in Philadelphia. Goose eggs on the scoreboard from Rhodes Field. Seelan Freund was trying to lead Rafino. I don't think she noticed that Gonzalez was there. Yeah, or maybe just trying to thread the needle a little bit too tight that time, but it comes to Seelan Freund again on the double taken away from the double team. Cardoza, the cutback. Quinn looks up. She'll switch, squaring it for Calhoun. Calhoun will keep it moving. Drives a shot from range and maybe a bit optimistic. Fox the save. Yeah, if you're going to shoot from that range, you got to get a little bit more leg into that one. We know Calhoun can put it in with that range from uh, from there with a little bit more power than she did on that attempt, but it happens from time to time. Fourth shot on goal of the half for the Bears. One in the air, Schlosser it hits the referee, so we'll have a drop ball. And the Bears are going to try to get Claire Myers in the next opportunity. Again, had a hat trick against Stonehill, one of two Brown Bears that have a hat trick in that game. Courtney Cummings, the freshman, coming up with three goals herself. It's been interesting to see some of the evolution of these Bears over the course of their careers. Somebody like Sealand Freund, for example, who, uh, you know, at the beginning of her career was playing in the wing midfield and is now a very threatening attacking player. And Myers, who started up top, moved to the midfield, and has played uh, in a couple of different spots and roles for the Bears in her career. Same for Haug. Some hands in the back, they let it go. Maxwell cuts back, has some room, squares it off. Sealand Freund in the middle, cut down. and Yeah, she just kind of lost her footing as she tried to swing it yep. back for Quinn. Schlosser will track back. She'll give it a touch to Cardoza. <laughs> They'll go to Duran. Duran working right to left. Comes up to Maxwell. Looks to cut back on uh, Ellingson. Pushes it to center. Drop back. Here comes Quinn, and she will just send it over the net. Yeah, I think he was bouncing just a little bit as it came to the foot of Quinn, but... Good work by the Bears. A really nice ball initially by Kayla Duran as she was able to get it to the near side for Maxwell, who had a fantastic settling touch before putting it back across. So a nice looking attack for the Bears. And it looks like Brittany Rafino will get a, uh, a rare rest. She usually goes up uh, pretty close to the full 90, but the one nothing lead right now, they'll take her out with 12 minutes to go as they get Myers in fresh off that hat trick. Well, and Mike, sometimes the, the 
you keep Rafino in sometimes out of necessity and something coach McNeil mentioned to us about Myers in particular was after that game against Stonehill, just playing with more confidence even in practice. Yeah, and I mean, and you can just feel it. Sometimes you got to feed the hot hand, right? You know, and she's been uh, playing well and probably the best form she's been in all season. And uh, the other thing, you got to kind of think ahead a little bit. You know, after today, you still got two huge games in Ivy play and then potentially the NCAA tournament. So, you know, managing minutes of people like Seelan Freund and Rafino, when you have a chance, you know, you got to take it. Bears will leave the throw with under 11 and a half left now here in the first half. The throw in for Seelenfroin. Rolls it toward the corner. And it'll bounce off of Seelenfroin's shin guard, says the official. Certainly pretty close down there again in the corner. And wow, there's an extra uh, 10 to 12 yards taken there by Mia Gonzalez. And she threw it out of bounds, so a little bit of... Uh, Perhaps some justice served as it's curled back to Grant Clavio towards center. Calhoun Duran works with it back for Cardoza. And yeah, the interchange between Cardoza and Duran this year has been very impressive. The freshman and the senior really have worked well on that back line. Hinton for Maxwell. Looks to cut back. <laughs> what footwork. Maxwell. Little too much on it. Schlosser had pinched, and it'll kick out to Quinn. Yeah, I think sometimes you make a move like that, you get that extra burst of adrenaline, and then your next touch is a little bit too heavy. But what a nice job by Zoe Maxwell to get through the defense. Duran dribbling at center. You get a feeling like Cardoza's the heir apparent to that center back spot in all likelihood. And the Bears have some options. They'll have Hinton back in the wings. They have uh, Quinn, who's played in that position. McGuire started in the... Uh, back line this season Hinton going up heads it down and how do you win that one in the air and still get it on goal that's a yeah that nice should be a shot on Hinton. goal yeah, yeah nice run and Hinton showing some good speed there and able to out duel Lily Ellingson in the air for that opportunity Grant Clavio on the wing looking for Myers bumped off and Maxwell turns and it's a corner kick and there's a bear down in the area. And it's, it's Myers, it, I believe. Uh, Myers was was uh, a lot of contact, Mike. Oh, yeah. Num right right yeah. in the numbers. Uh, or actually, it was Grant Clavio, I guess. Yeah. I very surprised. Shake that one off. Yeah, very surprised. Sydney Waiters got away with one, perhaps, there, Mike. Uh, yeah. She was, uh, again, that's the second or third time that we've seen Cornell really playing with fire back there with some. Uh, pretty heavy contact inside the penalty area, but no PKs yet. And actually, the Bears haven't even taken a PK this year, nor have they conceded one. So it's been one of those weird seasons. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Coach McNeil could hear me from. <laughs> She'd probably be telling me to shut up about that. But here comes Kira McGuire. Uh, okay, she can't change. There's a <laughs> for Kira McGuire. Well, unless they were saying. Replacing number 11. No, she, unless they were saying injury, Freund. but. No, it's, it's, yeah. she's going in for Seelenfreund, who was most certainly not hurt, so. Ball played near side. Maxwell cuts back left. Turns to center. Calhoun's shot blocked. Okay, okay. Hinton, near side. Ball bounced back. And it's curled out to the wing. Zeeland Freud checking back to the ball. And again, there's that pressure, though. Nowhere for Reagan Powell's to go. Zeeland Freud all over, and it winds up being a turnover. Schlosser, Calhoun has Myers making the run, didn't deliver it. Myers has to set back onside. Seelenfreund and Schlosser wide as well as we're inside seven and a half to play here in the first half. Ball turned right side for Schlosser from Cardoza. Cuts back, has some space, plays it towards center, Grant Clavijo. And again, Waiters coming in with the contact. Yeah, she's been good back there though. She has, she got the ball that time for sure. 
playing with confidence, Mike, and I think that's what you want yeah. from your center back because when you're when you're coming in as a center back in situations like that. You can't be indecisive. No. You, you have to commit to what you're doing. And, you know, she's a senior. She's logged a lot of minutes, one of the captains uh, this year. And uh, very impressed with, yeah. uh, you know, the, the level of her physical play. Cut back on the left side from Durek. Ball curled in front and handled on the cross. Yep. Cornell getting close to a shot, but again, uh, just a cross played in. Shop, who's uh, not been too busy yet, but it's, she stays engaged. You know, she kind of floats out of the box sometimes and kind of like that sweeper keeper, giving Durand and others an option. Ball headed. Set over the head of Cardoza. She will presumably keep it in, much to the chagrin of McGuire, who <laughs> remains at midfield waiting to check in. Duran has Hinton left. She'll use her. Good first touch, and she's just charged down by <laughs> Lily Ellingson. Not much attempt yeah. at anything but Hinton there. Yeah, that was a pretty easy one for the official to whistle dead. But again, poor McGuire just continues to try to stay loose there at the center flag, awaiting her opportunity. But she's been there, what, a good five, six minutes already? Oh, yeah. Not more than that. For sure. Ball set upfield. Myers, Maxwell, Calhoun. And now McGuire will get in. A nice stick there by... Cornell's uh, Durick. McGuire on Seelenfreund, who has the only goal of this one, will check off. Yeah, McGuire, who's popped in and out of the starting lineup at times this year and has certainly made the most of her minutes. Five Max goals, three assists for her. Maxwell for Hinton. She'll cut back. Duran, Cardoza. Looks like they're trying to get it all the way across to Schlosser, and they'll use it. And Cornell forced to bring basically everybody back. Quinn, who entered the game in about the sixth minute for DePriest. Hinton, again for Maxwell, cuts back right. We'll use Hinton again on the left. Hinton ahead. <laughs> Grant, Clive I'm sorry, Myers takes a shove, gets down toward the end line, keeps dancing in, ball out, Hinton heads towards center. And Maxwell threw four red jerseys, pushed it back. That one hits off the backside of Reinemann, and the Bears will reset Quinn, Cardoza, and again, they'll try it to Schlosser on the flank. Yeah. And tough touch for Schlosser. It runs on her for the throw. Yeah, Cornell kind of packing it in a little bit defensively, kind of creating one of those low blocks so difficult to penetrate through and get quality chances off of. They, I mean, they had all 11 players back in the defensive third of the field. Calhoun and Quinn back for Duran with the inside now approaching 330 left in the first half. Yeah, possession numbers got to be wildly in favor of the Bears right now. Because they've probably spent, what, 80% of the half in this end of the field. Duran chipping it up. Myers heads it in, and the save made by Fox. Great ball played in. Equally good header from Claire Myers, but a nice save from Erica Fox. Duran putting it right on the money. Good snap of the head there, but Fox was in good position and able to anticipate where that one was going to go. Yeah, probably the uh, save of the day so far for Fox, who's had to be pretty active. Duran sends it ahead, back to the ball comes McGuire, gets a touch, just missed Grant Clavio. And uh, the big red, Reinemann on the far wing, or check that as Durek on the far wing. And a nice stick by Schlosser. And it'll be a brown throw, no subs to report. So the Bears will keep moving with two and a half to play here. Yeah, and again, there's that pressure by the Bears, that, that press up front. You see all the players really buying into what they're doing. It It's a system, you know. It's not just one or two individuals up there wreaking havoc. It's the entire team. Anytime Cornell gets the ball, the Bears are immediately pressing and getting it back. A great ball from Myers. Grant Clavillo. McGuire. The side of the net. 
So close. The fans thought it was in. What a what a drive by McGuire, but the Bears had numbers. Grant Clavio, Myers, and McGuire, and McGuire knows it. Yeah, that went oh so close, but you just saw how that developed. Good work by the Bears, Clavijo and uh, McGuire. Schlosser deflects that out of bounds off Bashara for a throw as the Cornell Big Red dodge a major bullet in the closing couple of minutes. Fox might have uh, been in good position as well just to be disruptive. Again, she's very active coming off of her line and uh, I think in that case, Mike, it was just enough to maybe make McGuire think about the shot. Yeah, I think McGuire was doing all she could, just couldn't quite, you know, flip those hips around to, to hit the target, but we know she certainly is capable of putting it in from those areas. Cardoza waiting as we approach the final minute of the, pl of the play of the first half. That's going to be Ooh. set up and in and just gobbled up <laughs> by Fox. What a ball from Cardoza. Yeah, you know, uh, Fox kind of misplayed it at first. You know, she took a step or two forward and then realized, oh, boy, I got to get back. And then she started backpedaling, managed just to keep it out. Reinemann ahead for Ellingson. Cornell trying to counter here in the final minute of the half. And a well-timed tackle from the Bears. And that's going to bring up the first corner of the half for the Big Red, who threatened with yeah. the counterattack here. And they're going to have to hurry as time ticking away. Just about 20 seconds to go. All 11 Bears are back. Cornell sending up. Yeah, they're even going to bring Fox to midfield. Yeah, and Waiter's up as well. She's got the 5'10 frame. It looks like she's one of the desired targets. The ball headed back towards center, and Calhoun will send it away. And that should just about do it as the final seconds tick off of the first half, and that will do it for the first 45. Bears take a 1-0 lead on an Ava Seelenfreund goal, and we'll head to the locker room. Nursing the advantage. We'll step aside. This is the Ivy League on team, but the Bears in good spirits and rightfully so. Again, they control their own destiny for the Ivy League title. They win tonight. They win next week at Penn and then here against Yale in two weeks. And that's it. Another Ivy title would be their third in a row and 15th overall the most in Ivy League history. And we're underway. Brown will attack left to right here in the second half as we are just underway here in the second. Calhoun stepped to the ball hard. Waiters out to Quinn. Ahead for Grant Clavio. Seelen Freund fights through. Comes to the right side. Drops back for Myers who has started here in the second half. She gets a step. Cuts back. Works her way through and is going to draw the corner kick. And Claire Myers playing with another gear here. Well, it, this is vintage Claire Myers. This is when she was at her best a couple seasons back when she used to just take on attackers. That, that little play right there showed the confidence that she has and a lot of that stemming from Tuesday night's victory over Stonehill where she netted a hat trick and saw a lot of time. Well, that was a great attacking play and sets up Calhoun for the corner. Calhoun from the near side. Sends it up, one in the air by Rafino. tipped in front. I think it was Cardoza, and it'll be another corner kick for the Bears. Yeah, Cardoza crashing in on the back post, able to get the deflection off of Sydney Waiters, who's been tremendous on the back line for Cornell. Very physical presence back there, and uh, she that just was close to get to the arm of Waiters as well. Yeah, but I was going to say she got uh, got very, very close, but uh, again, uses her body so well and is in complete control. And here's where Calhoun could put that in swinger to good use. She's got the propensity to bend these ones almost into the goal. A little more outward this time. Zealin Freund ahead. Ball bounces and kept alive and knocked out. Maxwell chasing after it. Steps over and got maybe tangled herself. Ball sent across. Here comes Cardoza with the recovery and uh, will get in the way. Here comes the cross. Duran had gotten back in position and that will run out for a goal kick. Good counterattack as they found Reagan Powell's on the cross as uh, Maxwell, I think, tangled herself up. Yeah, but the, uh, the recovery pace from Naya Cardoza just streaking back to get in position and then 
You know, I think that almost caught Reagan Powell's uh, a little bit surprised there. She just was like, oh, and she just tried to pop it into the box, but nobody home for the big red. Bears will build from Hinton off the goal kick and back to Shop, who has yet to face a shot. Myers, who remained in for the second half, beats KK Haug is the only Brown starter not to return to the lineup to start the second half. Seelan Freund trying to challenge. Grant Clavio is chasing after it. And it comes out to the right side where it'll be chased by Malaga. Sets it ahead. Nicely played there by Duran. And back for Bishara. DeGraw cuts back left for Paulus. Powell's working against Cardoza, played at the center, and Duran knocks it away, but right to Bashara had to tangle with an oncoming Rafino. Finds its way to Lakin Gallman, who uh, came in at the half, did not play in the first half, and that's a foul on Powell's down. And again, you know, this is a couple times she's getting frustrated when getting called for the foul and kicking the ball away like that. Yeah, yeah Powell's the junior from Wall, New Jersey. Got to control your emotions, even Watch. when the fouls don't go against him. It's a clear foul. And right there, the whistle's well blown, and then he's blasting it away. And got a little bit of a finger wag from the official. Off to the far side, a miss hit by Hinton. will give the ball back to Cornell. Bears leading by a goal. Seelan Freund in the 24th minute. Calhoun stripped. Maxwell jostles, comes away, and they'll call a foul. Not sure if it's on Maxwell or Quinn. Either way, Mia Gonzalez had gone down, and Cornell will have a free kick. Yeah, we'll take another look here. Gonzalez trying to streak through, and yeah, Quinn kind of raising that arm up a little bit, extending it, knocking yep. Gonzalez down. Absolutely. And, he, and now one of the better chances for Cornell. They haven't had many opportunities in this end of the field tonight. Rafino, that's how you win a 50-50 <laughs> ball, isn't it? Yeah, she says, uh, I get that out of here, please. And now Cornell will regain its shape on the defensive end and try to reset things. Gonzalez, 5'10", junior, again, one of those big backs that the uh, Big Red have that have been under duress but have bent and not broken in this one despite, you know, the Bears with the heavy shot advantage the ball turned by Tatum Nelson out to the flank Bashara looking to turn curls it back towards center ball dropped taken away ball still loose and Myers will loft it away nice step by waiters squared off here's Bashara off to the far side and near side rather comes the ball for Seelan Freund who tries to make a run on it cuts back on DeGraw leads it ahead for Rafino and a good recovery by Gonzalez and again the Cornell back line keeping it composed yeah nice counter that time by the Bears good ball played up by Kayla Duran to get Seelan Freund in stride but Gonzalez was able to break it up at the very end And for Cornell, they brought Lakin Gallman, the junior from Mount Holly, North Carolina. Brought her on at the break. Duran will go all the way back to shop. Cornell playing with a little more moxie in the attacking third. Yeah, they haven't been bothered as much by the Brown press up front as they were in the first half. They found a couple of solutions there to work it through the midfield a little bit better. And they've uh, gotten a little bit more aggressive on the defensive end as well, in particular, Gonzalez. It was a great take, play on called, Gonz uh, Cardoza rather. Ooh, Big boy. collision, and they're going to get Seelenfreund as that was a big collision. Yeah, went up right away with Bashara right on the brown logo, and Seelenfreund a little slowed as well as, you know, her headband that she wears got popped off, and... Yeah, just two big, strong players going up for that 50-50 ball. Yeah, Waiters handing Seelenfreund back the uh, headband. And Bashara getting up. I think she had the wind knocked out of her, truthfully. Um, and Bashara, first year from Clarence Center, New York. Out in western New York. Oof. 
Well, fortunately, uh, both players seem to be okay and are able to, to continue without going off, or, or actually now it looks like they're going to... I think because she went down and, you know, we're always worried about... Well, with head injuries, head injuries. I think he yeah. said, you know what, I need the trainer to take a look at her. Um, and I think the Cornell trainer now will come over and have a little chat with yeah, Abigail Bashara. Peyton Nichols checks back on and... Replaces number five, Abigail Bichette. Waiters pushes the ball upfield. One in the air by the Bears. Maxwell leaving it for Hinton. And, you know, and that was a really good piece of officiating. You know, noticing that, you know, she, she took some head contact there and needed to be checked out by a professional on the sideline. Yeah, I mean, just because players give you the thumbs up yeah. is, uh, is not satisfactory. And I mean, 99 times out of 100, they're <laughs> going to be like, oh, I'm fine, no problem. But, you know, it, it's... You and I have been on the uh, the incorrect end of that as players as well. 100%. And again, uh, you know, the referee to make that call, it, it's not the easiest sometimes when you got a player, but it, it seemed like Bashar would kind of welcomed it as well as she walked over to the trainer there. It's one in the air, checking the ball came Quinn. Powell's with the touch. Grant Clavillo in transition, swings it out to Myers, cuts back to center, has Quinn making the overlapping run. Myers squares it to Quinn. Quinn has now Seelenfreud to the right. Seelenfreud stepping over, run down by Powell's, who's been a little on the edge here a couple times. Yeah, Powell's just uh, a little bit too feisty there on the challenge from behind. Bears are going to send Hinton over for this restart. You see, it's the uh, left arm coming up that, you oh. know, also that the left, leg, left leg, yeah, yep. the combination of the two and just yep. tripping the big brown attacker. But a chance here for Jessica Hinton. Sends one sliding, slicing across, one in the air, and they're going to get hands in the back on Grant Clavillo, which, again, trying to climb the ladder is so tempting to do and so illegal. <laughs> yeah, I tried to go through the Cornell player and getting to that ball. Erica Fox will put the ball down and restart. We've had quite a few whistles through the first nine minutes of this second half. All one in the air. Calhoun sandwiched between a couple of red jerseys. Little touch flashes out to the near side. Cardoza couldn't get there. Powell's on the ball for Cornell. Good recovery again for Myers who knocks it out. And that's going to be a handball, yeah. much to the chagrin there of DeGraw, but she went up to chest trap it and ended up hitting her in the bicep. And again, good uh, work out of Claire Myers and Cardoza, able to slow down that Cornell attack. Good pace out of the two of those in their recovery that time. Bears are going to keep it short. Cardoza looking left. Bears using the whole pitch to get it across to Maxwell. Leads it for Rafino, who's been battling with Waiters all day. And that's a great take by Sydney Waiters to slow down the Bears. You know, wait and see who they're going to have to take the throw. It looks like Maxwell for now as Rafino just couldn't quite turn the corner. And in the end, the safe play out of Waiters. She turns this time, distributes, looking towards center, knocked away by Malaga. And over the head of Duran who will give it a touch back. Bella Shop with some space now. Keeps it moving. Cardoza on the ball. Turns. Myers couldn't quite get there. They'll try it again. Quinn out ahead. Seelenfreund with a touch. And the Bears will reset. Cardoza. Duran and now Hinton with Calhoun in front of her. Maxwell again to the far left. Heels to the far sideline. Lifted up by Hinton. Rafino couldn't turn on Waiters. And it'll be a brown throw deflected off of Emily St. John. And it'll be a throw in again for the Bears who, despite commanding the vast majority of play in terms of the possession in this one, have only the one goal. Hinton keeps going and is not going to get there. Looked like the ball just had a little bit more pace than Hinton could muster. Yeah, too heavy of a touch that time out of Rafino with that overlapping run from Hinton. 
Cornell throws it in. Maxwell for Rafino. Turns on Gonzalez toward the end line, keeps it moving, and that's a heck of a play by Mia Gonzalez to keep that from being a corner kick. It's the Bears. That's kind of their bread and butter sometimes when trying to draw corners as the begloved Maxwell tosses it in. Maxwell out of Irvington, New York. Toss that off of a Rafino leg and Cornell resets with a throw. Out of hit. That's taken back by Cardoza. Puts it on a line, looking to go over the top. Knocked out. Gallman. Biked herself in the face there, did Paulus. Yeah, never a good feeling. No. Ball comes out to the wing. Seelen Freund steps into it, keeps it moving. Powell's with a little extra. And Cardoza lifts it up the near sideline. Ball died. And yeah, some wicked backspin on that one, and it kind of reversed its course after the initial bounce. But uh, somehow will stay with the Bears after it was tapped out of play. And Myers will have the joy of getting this one back in with the throw. Checking two, Cubs, Grant Clavio, Seelen Freund, and Rafino. Rafino backing in, draws the corner kick. Nice throw in there by Myers. Yeah, pokey go with the touch out of play. And again, Calhoun has been one of the more dangerous weapons for the Bears this evening with the balls that she's been able to play in off the Number corner. Evelyn Calhoun will take the corner. Yeah, Pokigo's had quietly a pretty good game. We've focused so much on Sydney Waiters play in the back line, but those two center backs have been have been solid. Here comes the corner kick for the Bears. Calhoun again looking to deliver. Here comes Rafino. It's over the top. Yeah, Maxwell. She, she might have knocked the wind out of herself as she came down a little awkwardly in an abrupt manner. Ball bounces in on Fox and she will gobble it up. Now she came in high and hot and heavy. All three H's. And I think she was expecting maybe a little bit more contact there. Never came and she just boom right to the turf. That seems to be okay now. One in the air, Hinton with a 30 yard header. And Rafino putting it under for Gonzalez. It'll be a throw in for the Bears. You can see the adjustments Cornell's been able to make. They've made things less fluid for the Bears. The Bears had so much joy in the first half of just kind of running all over the place in the Cornell end of the field. Things have been a little bit more harder to come by for Brown here in the second half, and that's because of the style that Cornell, again, they're playing a little bit more pressing action, not trying to give the Bears as much time on the ball with freedom. Allman plays it to Powell's. Ball we'll turned back to Shop. 1 0, the score remains with 30 minutes to play here in the second half. The sun completely gone from our sight lines here. The temperatures will continue to decline, and that one's going to oh. bounce past Waiters to Seelen Freund on the reset. Turns to the right side, Myers. Drives towards the edge of the box, gets the turn. Well played there by uh, the play of DeGraw. Myers drops it back. Quinn chips it up. Rafino, Grant Clavio turns, drives, and it's stuck again by Waiters. Well, the Bears starting to get a little bit more dangerous now. Some really good work from Claire Myers deep in Cornell territory to work that ball and then get it off. And now the Bears will make a quick change. Yeah, with Haug coming in for Calhoun, that means Hinton will be pressed to service as we get another look at, again, fearless play by Waiters using that. Really good closeout speed there. Yeah. You can tell Calhoun played a lot of minutes in the first half as well. So Hinton will take the corner. Again, the Bears without Cheyenne Allen. It's a low corner driven towards, looked like it was Grant Flavio. Yeah, never made it past the first wave of defense. Kind of a low liner that time out of Hinton. Is, yeah, she manages to keep that one in. Looked pretty close. 
Maxwell tripped by uh, Tatum Nelson. The Duxbury, Vermont product got all of uh, Maxwell. Yeah, coming from behind, easy call for the official. There's the foul. You heard us chuckle, it's because Duran with a little gamesmanship on the spot of the ball. It's a good ball pushed up over the head of Rafino. Deflects to KK Haug and will turn to Powell's. Powell's comes to the near side. Track back did Myers. And set back for DeGraw. Good challenge in the midfield as the ball came to St. John. Back to Waiters and she'll switch fields out to Gonzalez on the right side. Tried to lead it ahead. Good step there by the Bears. I think it was Hinton on the ball. That one's going to run towards the corner. And uh, despite the efforts on the right side, it'll run for a Brown goal kick. And so far, Cornell bending but not breaking, holding the number one offense in the Ivy League in check for the most part. I mean, the Bears average almost three goals per game. Tops in the league, six best in the nation coming into today. Again, a lot of that uh, due to the 11-0 win on Tuesday night over Stonehill, but still, even before that, they were up certainly in the top portion. Great take there by Waiters again as she went down that time. As Sometimes she's playing it just across that time. More important, impressively, I should say. No foul. Yes. Yeah, so McGuire comes in now to replace Myers. Again, great minutes out of Myers in both halves today. Yeah, give credit where credit is due, Mike. Uh, you know, I think the uh, what's almost more impressive is for players like Myers and, you know, even Quinn, Haug, those are players who weren't really being used a ton and then find themselves into the lineup as here comes Grant Clavillo, swings it out, McGuire near side of the box, tracks back near the end line, touches for Quinn, Quinn sets it, it ends up on the foot of Cardoza and she will settle it back for Duran. She'll go left side for Hinton as uh, Cornell pressing, Hinton to the far flank and that's out of bounds. Yeah, the Bears have just been a, a little bit off on some of these passes. Some uncharacteristic errors. I mean, you think this is the 14th game of the of the season for the Bears, and we get a whistle. I mean, we saw Schlosser earlier today. That was just her fourth appearance. Uh, Hogg had seen action in 11 games, but you know the Bears. Some of the Bears <laughs> who are playing, even though they're. Playing a list. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot, of, lot of contact. Lot of con I love Hinton popping up with it. What, me? Yeah, it was you that time, yes. <laughs> but even though they're playing the 11 or 12 games, sometimes it's mop-up duty. So I think that's uh, a credit, again, we talked well, about depth. And, and it goes to what Coach McNeil was talking about, not just their depth, but, you know, if these players impress when they get their chances. That's a good ball, yeah. and that will go in the books as the first shot on net. Yeah, first four, shot, four now. period. <laughs> yeah, Sarah DeGraw uncorked one. From range, that shop had some room, and again, shop uh, it's a pretty good size at five foot nine at least. And she punts that one into the night sky, bounces over Rafino. Grant Clavio couldn't get there. Middle of the field, Haug and Maxwell find it in the midfield. It's turned, swung out to the flank by Lakin Gallman. Good run here by Gonzalez. Sends it towards center, and uh, Duran has to clean it out. Shot was coming off her line. Cornell will have their second corner of the game looking for the equalizer as they have, I think you could say, had their more dangerous attempts over these last couple or three minutes. Well, Number set pieces can often be a difference maker, and we know how much value Coach McNeil places on them for the Bears. I'm sure Coach Ferguson for Cornell Cornell has a lot of bodies up, staggered around the box, Mike. One in the air, first ball, second ball, Seelen Freund chipped through and just wide. Did not miss by much, Mike. <laughs> not much at all. Some nervy moments there inside the Brown area. Take a look at the finishing product that nearly nets the equalizer. It was Gallman. Yeah, just kind of poked a little bit wide. 
That's one where you hope your goaltender's in the right position, but with the way that ball was bouncing, even if you're in the right position as a goalie, it can bounce up and over you. I really credit Cornell on their back line. Uh, you know, they've done quite the job on Rafino so far. She has not been able to get some of her trademark runs going. The Bears have not been able to spring her free. And she hasn't really taken many shots from range either. I mean, I, I, I feel like, you know, here we are. I don't, I don't know if she has a shot. Yeah, Rafino to this point, zero shots, period. A rarity. McGuire. Well and, defended. Uh, yeah, DeGraw not only well, takes up the body, but then no corner kick. It's a throw in. And you feel that every minute that passes by now with this just being a one nil margin, Cornell's confidence is just soaring. You can just feel it. You yep. can just feel their confidence growing. And, uh, you know, the Bears, like we talked about, you know, right at the start of this half, the Bears needed to get that insurance goal or two to really knock Cornell back because any longer that they let them in, Cornell's going to just start feeling better and better about their chances. Bears snap the throw. They took Duran up to take the long throw. Seelan Freund in front, and oh, close call for Anderson, who was trying to pull the trigger. As any time you see somebody with the courage to take a slide in the box, you wonder if there's going to be ball, as there's going to be a whistle on the Bears' Seelan Freund. Maybe yeah, was the flag way, up? Uh, no. I didn't see the flag go up. Take another look at. This opportunity it fell nicely for Seelan for she just couldn't get the shot off because guess who, who is in the way again? Sydney Waiter. She's been all over the place on that back line for Cornell. You know, the, di the difficult thing about, about this for if you're Cornell is, you know, your record right now is, is uh, you know, 2 6 and 5, 0 oh, 2 and 2. And, you know, we've, we've been watching a lot of Ivy League women's soccer this season. I, I, would, I, would, I don't know what happened in the Harvard game, I didn't watch the entire thing. Um, the 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 entire 90 minutes but you would be i mean i'm surprised watching this saying wow Cor Cor cornell gave up five yeah i mean you know they've only given up 20 on the season but you know it's been scoring goals that has really been the issue for the big red only 11 goals in their 14 games so far and that takes a lot out of a defense yep. when you know you have to be all but all but perfect powell's working against cardoza Quinn, McGuire sending it up the near sideline, but again, the Bears a little handcuffed, and you feel momentum very much, as Mike said a minute ago, very much on the side of Cornell over these last maybe eight minutes of game time. And Coach Ferguson is still upset with what's being called or not called out there. I think he felt that Powell's had been fouled deep in the brown end. Bears here finally trying to get Rafino. On the run, but Waiters just a great job again. Left side, Maxwell. Keeps after on the wing. Cuts back, doesn't have a lot of support. It will run, and it's going to be a brown throw despite the protestations of the big red back line. Raina Gabriel getting ready to check in for Cornell. It'll be her first minutes of the match. Ball played to center. Seelan Freud cuts back. Could have been a handball. Yeah, yeah indeed it was. it was. Cornell all over that one. Sophie Weeder and I think Durek, who did come in late in the first half. So a, a couple of Cornell players checking in that we have not seen. So some fresh legs for Coach Ferguson. My guess is you'll see them run around for about eight or nine minutes to give a couple of their attackers some some uh, some breath and overstep there by McGuire and they're going to get McGuire I think for pushing off of Sarah DeGraw. I think Cornell would rather have the throw at this point to get their changes in, but a restart on the field it shall be. And if I'm reading this correctly right now on the stat monitor, Mike, the Bears with only one shot in the second half right now. Total, yes, you are reading it correctly. And it remains a 13 to two margin, but that means Cornell actually out shooting them here in the second frame, a two one margin. Yeah, the Bears, we talk about the press folks that Brown likes to employ. It, it involves getting their attackers up into the attacking third and the Bears haven't had much shape or success as that one deflects off Sealand for a fearless play. As that one is popped up and over the top, Cardoza drives it back up 
to the foot of Bashara, who did check back in. Cardoza, nice stick by Powell's. And Duran says, enough of this, let's get our shape back. And that will allow the trio of Cornell players to check on. It will be Powell's off, it will be Nelson off, and it will be Malaga off. A little surprised they're taking off Powell's. She's been kind of a spark plug up top, and it'll be also interesting to see if the three changes takes Cornell a little bit out of their rhythm, which they've been in for a bit now. I think this is about, again, quick breath of fresh air, get your water, and you're going quickly back into the match. Don't, don't get too comfortable on the bench. Yeah, Reinemann getting set to check in next for Cornell. Well, and as well as Cornell is playing in the back line, you wonder if they're gonna make some changes formation-wise and try and press offensively and disrupt that back line, but you need to get a goal in some way as that one's pushed upfield. <laughs> Waiters with a very close call to Gras. Anderson trying to pressure Bashara, who switches fields. Maxwell trying to hot foot after it, and that one's gonna get away uh, from Mia Gonzalez. Reinemann will check in at the next opportunity for Cornell in a one goal game. Been an entertaining soccer game for sure and a lot of opportunities in the first half for the Bears as it comes rolling to McGuire kind of held up, saw Bashara coming. And in the second half, it's been a very even half of soccer. Ball over the head of Bashara. Trying to turn, Rafino, Seelenfreund, dancing back, cuts back right. Squaring it off, Anderson had zigged and unfortunately the ball zagged on her. Duran, head up, back for Bella Shop, who's seen a couple of shots here in the second half. Shop swinging it out to the wing, it's a tough touch. Maxwell will get back for the ball, collision. Haug, and they're gonna call Maxwell. Whoa, that's a tough one on Maxwell. That just looked like a straight up regular challenge. No real argument. We'll see if uh, see if we get another look at it. Oh, yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, that's a tough one. And then, well, there's the reaction right there. She's like, are you serious? Um, that's a tough one. That was a little, that was a little tough for the Bears, but now a great opportunity for Cornell who hasn't had many of these chances. They send that one towards the 18, it's headed. Second ball, and Duran knocks it away. I think Quinn actually got the first touch. And that will run away on the Bears. And it will be a Cornell throw. They have subs ready to check in on both sides, so either way we'll hear the horn as uh, Reinemann replaces Bashara, and now Myers will give Seelenfreund a rest. That'll put McGuire up top with Rafino. So we head to the final third of the second half, or final sixth of the game, depending on how you look at it. 15 minutes remaining here in Ooh. the second half. Quinn comes up with it, and I'm sorry, Myers sending Rafino. She looks to turn on Pokigo, and Pokigo getting the leg up a little bit that time as Rafino was trying to jump over her at the same time. Here's another look. Rafino going full tilt there, and yeah, you see her reaching in with that right leg. Bears bringing Cardoza and now Duran. Coach Ferguson continues to voice his disquietude. Duran is gonna in put fairness, it in play. The, uh, the fouls even at 12 apiece. That one towards the 18. Rafino gets ahead on it. Myers, the touchback for Quinn. She'll send Cardoza. She'll chip it back up. Rafino on the far wing of the box. She cuts back at the end line. Turns it back in front, dropped in front and scored! I want to say it was Claire Myers who got the initial touch and Jillian Anderson, or Lucinda Anderson. 
cleans up the garbage. What do they call it, Jillian? Yeah, what a play there by the Bears. And, you know, Rafino timed the run perfectly. The hands went up for Cornell, but it was not offside. Here's the ball in by Cardoza. Rafino does well to get underneath it on the other end. Has freedom to work with. Plays it across. Thought they were going to get the initial goal there. Myers couldn't, but Lucinda Anderson crashing in. And finally, the Bears getting the insurance that they've needed so badly. And you got to feel for the big red, Mike. They've been holding on and putting some pressure on the Bears. But by number well, you know, and it, it was the initial Anderson. the initial ball across by uh, the As Bears, the Brittany Rafino. And, by you know, give Gwen credit to, to Myers, who was right there on the doorstop. The yeah, I'd probably give an assist to Rafino as well, but you know, it was just a, a nice job by Rafino. Again, it's the timing of that run, curling around the backside, getting on the other end of it, playing it across to Myers, who had that first touch, and then Anderson banging it home for the second goal. Bears on top by a pair, and, and they did now give the, uh, the assist there to Rafino, and that was well deserved. Again, it's hard to keep her quiet the entire night. Has the ball in the midfield, working against Waiters with McGuire in front of her and the Bears. Now here comes working through. Oh, big challenge there by Waiters. Down hard went yeah, McGuire. Oof. And Mike, you mentioned that the uh, substitutions coming for Cornell. You know, I don't know that it necessarily disrupted them. But it's certainly a different look. And well, and cause you, as you said, you know, there was a couple of players that hadn't played at all tonight. And to come into a game of this intensity and this magnitude cold off the bench, it, it's, it's just tough challenging. to assimilate into, you know, what's going on right away. And you look back and it's only a couple minutes, you know, after they, they came on. And not that it's any of their faults by any means, but no. it just breaks up that chemistry a little bit. Haug, Maxwell, and now out ahead. Now, Jillian Anderson was the star of the X-Files. Where did I get that? <laughs> Why that came out is beyond me. I never even watched say, the X-Files. We haven't had a Jillian, I don't think, for a while. Yeah, so. I don't know where that came from. That's what happens when you don't caffeinate the play-by-play -play guy <laughs> enough, I guess. 12 minutes left here in the second half. Bears getting, I believe last year I called Evelyn Calhoun Grace Calhoun. Yeah. She's, uh, she's, she's, but in all fairness, doctor. you know, Dr. Calhoun had just started as the AD here, so I think that was fresh in our minds. Now, with under 12 minutes to play here in the second half, I think this is where if Cornell's going to make a change to maybe one fewer back to try and press, this is where we might see it. Yeah, as it's just so risky when you're going against players like Rafino and McGuire, and if they bring Seal and Freund back in, you got Calhoun. It's, I mean, but yes, it's, it's at that point in the game where if you're going to do it at all, you, you might as well do it now. Yeah, some frustration there from Rafino as uh, sh she saw. McGuire making the run right, and she was hoping she would cut back left. Ball bounces, Haug left side, tracking back to the ball comes Maxwell, and maybe got a little poke at it. I'm gonna wonder how long Cornell will spend before they make a uh, change of that one to flex yeah. off Hinton. Yeah, well, that was actually, I think it was uh, just or a Maxwell. miss hit yeah. by Duran. Yeah. She just, uh, a rare miss hit from her. She tried to left foot it away and just kind of sliced it out for a corner. Cornell will bring some numbers. Oh, they thought about going short there for a moment. And it'll be in on Bella Shop. And they took that corner kick kind of quickly, and really the Bears had more numbers around that ball than Cornell did. Well, obviously, with time becoming a factor, I think they just wanted to get it back and play. But you're right. You still saw those players trickling into the box, not really getting set for their runs yet. Shops punt. Looks like Anderson got an elbow in the back. Lucinda Anderson quietly putting together a pretty good season. Three goals off the bench for her on the season. Yeah, had the game winner on Tuesday. And the insurance goal so far tonight. Myers is trying to fight for it. It runs to Cardoza, keeps it in. Anderson. And keep in mind, Anderson a year ago, Mike, and this is, I think, you know, one of the things that you just mentioned a few minutes ago. If you impress and you play well, you're going to get minutes. Anderson is a junior, and she did not play, obviously, two years ago as a first year. She did not see much time last year. Uh, yeah. I think she only played in a game or two, if that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, you know, again, the, the depth on this team oh. is... So strong as 
Cornell able to, to buy a foul there as Ashley Durick took the contact. Kind of a look here, let's see. A little bit of a shove from Cardoza. So a two player wall here for the Bears. Myers and Quinn being set up by Shop. We're under nine minutes, or not under 10, now about nine minutes remaining. That one put across. Rafino had come all the way back. Ball's gonna run out, drive up and over the top as Emily St. John a little heavy. Man. with the delivery. It's well struck, but just not on target. As Calhoun comes back in and in for Cornell. Bashara returns, as does Tatum Nelson. And Haug will head out. Replacing number 26, Sarah DeGraw. To the Bears, number So with DeGraw heading out, there's the change, because she's been playing a flank back position. So that puts Gonzalez on one spot. It's gonna put Waiters on the other with Pokigo. It at center of the back line. Oh. And that one's through to Myers. What a feed by Rafino. Myers into the area. And a good recovery by Pokigo. Well, yeah, if she doesn't make that recovery, by Kira McGuire standing all alone at the top of the six, just waiting for that pass to come across from Myers. But great closing speed again by the Cornell defense. What a great ball through five players by Rafino. Well, and, and, you know, the Bears are licking their chops the now with the only three backs back there. Should have a, a lot more space to work with up top and be able to send players like Rafino and Myers through. Here comes the corner, a low, hard driven corner and lifted by Lucinda Anderson up and over the top. Yeah, Anderson, uh, Maybe a decent strike on that one. Looking for that top corner on the far side as now Powell comes back in and is waiting for her. Yeah, she will check in, replacing Reina Gabriel. You gotta like the fire, the intensity that Powell's played with. She's not gonna take anything from anyone out there. Listed at just five, six, but certainly a little spark plug out there for the big red. Left side Hinton, Calhoun. All the way back to Ran with Cardoza and now Shop. The pressure came from Cornell. They force it to Gonzalez. Anderson leaving it back. Cardoza sends it upfield. Rafino will make a run. Pokigo will touch all the way back to the goaltender and put on a line. Just misses Anderson, but she gets some help from Bishara. Dishes. McGuire, the drive just wide with the left-footed shot, but that's because it was tipped. Yeah, last second deflection there for the corner kick. Bears with numbers that time again. You could see since that formation change already, the Bears with multiple chances. I was a little bit surprised she didn't just feed Maxwell, but Maxwell was actually pointing to the other side, but it looked like she had a free path to goal. If she just gets a little touch from McGuire, perhaps a little too unselfish that time. So Calhoun, who's back out there now to take these corners. Ninth corner of the day for Brown, who's among the league's most proficient team, prolific teams, I should say, in that. Yeah, they average over seven corner kicks per game. That number will go up again tonight. Calhoun dancing towards the end line and make it corner kick number 10. Yeah, and just great work. She saw she had two defenders on her and Number was able to earn yet another corner kick. Corner kick Cornell there. getting Sydney Malaga back, uh, ready to get back into the match. So we head to five and a half left here in the second half. Hand up from Calhoun, here's the kick. Oof. Driven down, down went the goalie and the ball away by the defense. Yeah. Fox came out and well, she, she got the initial touch, popped it straight up, but then couldn't get the second ball. Oh, Here's boy. Duran. Ball oh. down. What a shot. And just wide. What a drive by Kayla Duran, who's going to smile on her face saying, I don't believe it. That's one that both Duran and Myers are going to wish they had back. Is What a blast from Kayla Duran. Gets all of that. Bar Ooh, whoa, oh, whoa! That, that's that, a goal. That was actually in. It was in. The replay that looked pretty clear. Yeah, that ball was Unfortunately, in. Unfortunately, they can't review it, but wow, a tough break for Kayla Duran. 
The ball came far down behind the line. I was wondering just the, the way it looked at first. Calhoun's corner. Collision between Duran and uh, McGuire. Yeah, well, the Bears. Here's Rafino. And a whistle. Oh, the, yeah, delayed offside that time coming from the offside position. Well, Fox uh, <laughs> dodges a bullet there. Literally. Oof. Cardoza, Anderson, and the ball turns out to Gonzalez. Well, that one looked like it rolled up the arm. Is another big collision involving balls. And that will get Malaga an opportunity to check back in. Replacing Durek. Replacing number six, Ashley Durek. Wow, so. Nothing else, an entertaining soccer game. As the big red trying to make things interesting here. Ball for Gonzalez, Cardoza with the shield. And uh, just a veteran play there from the first year. Good strength. I mean, Cardoza just completely shielding away the oncoming Gonzalez. You talk about maybe an unsung hero for this team this year. Coming I, in as I, a freshman. I, I'm telling you, Mike. And I, eating up a ton of minutes starting since day one. And my, my, I tell you, I think I put her on the short list for Rookie of the Year as oh the boy. ball comes for Rafino. Oh. oh, boy. And he says, got the ball, did Waiters. That was a dangerous challenge, though. The there it is again. Let's see. The Brown coaching staff not oh. too happy. And we've been singing her praises on the edge all night long, but that was a tough one to not see anything is Kia McNeil shaking her head and that's going to be another Brown throw Bears have had a little bit of unlucky touches over the last couple of minutes you could say the bar down shot from Duran yeah and that would have been nearly impossible for the AR to pick yeah, that one yeah. up just that's what I mean just <laughs> unlucky and it was so fast in real time. I mean, it's easy for us to say after the fact. Well, the sure. distance of where the shot was, too. So the line would have been pushing up as Duran was coming in at the, near the top of the box. So the position for the AR to make that call, yeah, there's right. no way he no was way. on the goal line extended. Uh, so A hundred percent. McGuire puts it across. And Rafino. The header just wide. Now that would have been sweet justice for Rafino there to get that one. She's deserved one. Coming on real strong here in the closing stages of the match. Uh, she's she's looking for another for one. You can tell. One in the air. Anderson got a hand on it. I think it was her arm. Even she seems surprised. She said it hit my face. <laughs> and now the referee's going to stop the clock with a minute 31. And they'll make. Someone's got to get that extra ball off the field. And Bella Mauricio of the women's <laughs> basketball team will jog out onto the field to retrieve that one. He's one of the ball attendants here tonight. Chipped up by Waiters. Quinn Anderson knocks it downfield, and McGuire will run. Chased back by Pokigo, and she has to go nowhere but out of bounds. And with a minute 15 left, the Bears are on their way to their 10th victory of the season. Myers will leave it for Cardoza, and the referee's going to stop the clock again. And uh, the fourth referee and the Brown coaching staff are... Well, I mean, it wasn't like they were doing anything different than what they've done all game long. Myers leaving it for Cardoza, which one usually, minute, yes, a midfielding player will leave it for the defender to come up and take it. Rafino steps back to the ball, continues to work, touches back for Anderson. Lucinda looking left, feeds... Maxwell to the corner, and they're going to call Maxwell offsides, although looked like at the time of the service, she was stepping back to the ball, in fact. However, the Bears don't catch a break there, and uh, Cornell will put the ball down. 
Single shot on goal for the Big Red and a stout defensive effort for Brown as the ball is headed. Hinton chasing back. Hinton doing a nice job there, just shielding that one. Ten. And the ball will run. And in the end, the Bears will reclaim first place in the Ivy League. Four, three. Two, jumping against, one. jumping again over Harvard, who had beaten Princeton earlier today. The Bears with a 2-0 victory. And the streak continues for the Bears now have beaten Cornell 10 straight times.